My name is Carolyn Bramante, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N, B-R-A-M-A-N-T-E. I'm an assistant professor of general internal medicine and pediatrics at the University of Minnesota. And I'm telling you about the COVID out trial. It was a randomized clinical trial of early outpatient treatment for COVID-19 using generic medications. The medications were metformin, ivermectin, and fluvoxamine in two combination arms, metformin and ivermectin, metformin and fluvoxamine, and placebo. So this was a six-arm randomized trial. And the reason we did this trial is to understand whether or not any of these medications prevented severe COVID-19 disease. And the trial was, included adults age 30 to 85 who were diagnosed with a SARS-CoV-2 infection within the past three days and had a BMI body mass index greater than 25. They were enrolled remotely throughout the country, and then we delivered the medication to them as quickly as possible with same day or overnight shipping uh, delivery options whenever possible. Our interest in uh, conducting this study started with computer modeling uh, here at the University of Minnesota. So biomedical engineers used a huge computer simulator that they normally use to simulate cancer and medication targets for cancer treatments. And in early 2020, they used that simulator to look at the virus and medication targets. Then other researchers here at the university used natural language processing to analyze the medical literature to find existing medications that acted on the protein targets that the computer simulator identified. Then um, the, through natural language processing, they identified several medications that currently existed and appeared that they might uh, protect individuals from progressing to severe COVID-19 disease. In addition to this in silico data, the computer data, there was also in vitro data, the group at UCSF published a paper early in 2020 looking at existing medications and whether or not they decreased the SARS-CoV-2 virus in test tubes. And they did show that some of the medications in this trial decreased the virus in test tubes, specifically metformin. And then they also, um, there was observational data about metformin and associations with having less severe COVID-19 disease for individuals who were already taking metformin before they got infected with the virus. So we chose the three medications, metformin, ivermectin, and fluvoxamine uh, for several different reasons. Metformin was chosen because of several types of evidence that suggested it might work in silico modeling by a big computer simulator, in vitro data, test tube data showing that metformin decreased the virus, and then observational data, so cohort studies that showed an association with less severe COVID-19. Fluvoxamine was chosen because there was already one small trial showing that fluvoxamine prevented severe COVID-19 and other trials underway uh, that suggested early on that fluvoxamine might be effective. And then ivermectin, there was one trial before we added ivermectin to our study, and it showed that there was no association with less severe COVID-19 in that trial, but the trial did include young individuals who were very healthy, and they used a, a dose lower than what we used. And there was still a lot of attention and use of ivermectin, so it seemed like uh, it was important to generate more clinical trial data about ivermectin as well. And all three medications are currently available safe generic medications that are available in pill form. So because of that reason, it made sense to study all three of them together 
in a randomized trial. I think there are many important things that were learned from our trial. Uh, first, what we learned is that the oxygen data in our trial is probably not a good indicator of severe COVID-19 disease. There are several reasons for that. One of the main reasons is that the FDA did issue a statement after we started our trial that said, these home oxygen monitors are not all that accurate. So that knowledge can be used by other people conducting clinical trials um, of prevention of severe COVID-19 disease so that they can find the best way to define the outcome that best indicates severe COVID-19 disease. So we uh, hope to discuss and uh, share findings and things that we learned about how to conduct an efficient and yet meaningful clinical trial in a remote fashion like we did. For any clinical trial, we can really only say with certainty that the results would apply to populations or groups of people who are similar to those who were enrolled in the trial. So in this case, that means adults with a BMI in the overweight or obesity category. As of right now in 2022, that's probably about 22 or probably about 80% of adults in the US. So it would apply to most adults, um, but not necessarily everyone. So we did that for two reasons. Early data suggested that having an elevated BMI, even as low as 25, does put people at increased risk of having more severe COVID-19 disease. So we wanted to have one threshold um, of, for, of enrollment in the study so that we weren't enrolling people who were very healthy and were not gonna have any um, severe COVID-19 disease in the study. Additionally, some of the ways that we think metformin might, might work to prevent severe COVID-19 disease is by decreasing inflammation in the body. And many types of inflammation are thought to be increased or come from fat cells or adipocytes in the body. So in a way you would sort of need um, a certain amount of those fat cells and inflammation to be able to see an effect from, medic from metformin. So those were the two reasons why we had a BMI minimum for enrollment in this study. What our trial shows is that there was no impact of ivermectin or fluvoxamine on preventing the primary outcome in the trial or the key secondary outcome in the trial. What our trial did show is that metformin also does not prevent the primary outcome, having a low oxygen level, needing to go to the ER, be hospitalized, or dying from COVID-19. However, our trial did, uh, we, in our trial, we did observe that metformin prevented over 40% of uh, needing to go to the ER, be hospitalized or dying from COVID-19 disease, the key secondary outcome. So our study suggests that there should be future research focused on studying metformin for prevention of severe COVID-19 disease and that um, clinicians may, under, may use our results to affect their clinical practice, but ultimately we look to guideline committees to help cull all the evidence in a body of knowledge about any disease state so that they can make best recommendations for all clinicians. So all we know is about what is about the data that we generated in our trial. And so what we know is that at the dose we used, which was a median of 430 micrograms per kilo per day for three days, there was no effect on reducing severe COVID-19 in this population. And our population was adults over age 30 with a BMI greater than 25.
So at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, there was understandably a lot of effort looking at existing medications that might work against the virus. One study early on showed that ivermectin reduced the virus in vitro in test tubes, but the amount of medication being used was probably much higher than what would be safe to use in humans. Uh, there were also other types of studies going on, observational studies, and one clinical trial had been completed by the time we added ivermectin, but they had very few events, so very few outcomes related to severe COVID-19. So it seemed reasonable to add ivermectin to our study uh, because there had been very little, if no, uh, clinical trial data at that point. Our trial has many indications that metformin may prevent severe COVID-19 disease. Individuals should always work with their own medical provider on what decision is right for them as an individual. We hope that clinicians and researchers read our results and hope and help to move the science forward around um, metformin for use for preventing severe COVID-19 disease. I'm not on any of the guideline committees that makes the recommendations around treatment for COVID-19. I'm just grateful to be able to be contributing to the body of knowledge around this pandemic. And I remind everyone to not take any medications without consulting with their own medical provider first. I think you know it's great for anyone to be reading uh, medical studies and journal articles, but then really they can look to guideline committees as far as what they are recommending for treatment of COVID-19, because these committees consist of people who are on top of the entire breadth of literature around different treatments and around uh, COVID-19.